Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I am finally going to be doing my Bat Out of Hell review. Um, <laughs> I went to go and see Bat Out of Hell in June when I went down for West End Live. If you've seen my West End Live London vlog, then you will know I went to go and see Bat Out of Hell on the Friday night when I got there. Um, and I said I was going to do a review and finally, three months later, you're getting that review. I'm sorry to take taken so long, I sort of just forgot to do it and every time I'd sit down to do it, something would come up, the recording wouldn't work, stuff like that. So yeah, I'm just going to do the review now um, and just let you guys know what I thought of it. Um, I haven't brought anything down, I'm just sort of going to spew them at you. It's probably just going to be more of a ramble than a review, but yeah. If you want to see what I thought of Bat Out of Hell, then just keep watching. So, I went to go and see Bat Out of Hell on the 15th of June, I want to say. I went to go and see it. Um, I didn't get... Obviously, I got my ticket. I bought the tickets online at todaytix.com. I got rush tickets on the morning. One well, my friend did. And they were £25. We were supposed to be sat in row X of the stalls at the Dominion Theatre. But that was really far back um, and with it being quite empty that night we decided that we would um, move forward into row E because there was five seats there available for us to sit in so um, yeah we moved forward into row E and I have no complaints with the view um, I thought it was amazing the set design of Battle of Hell is really interesting you can tell it's sort of post-apocalyptic you can tell that it's not supposed to be um, kind of set now. It is set um, quite far in the future. It's never really specified, um, but it is set in the future after an apocalypse and stuff like that. I'll get onto the story in a minute. Um, but yeah, first of all, let's talk about the cast. I went to go and see Andrew Pollock as Strat and Christina Bennington as uh, Raven. I thought they were both absolutely incredible. The chemistry between them two is just, it's so there. I'm pretty sure that together, I'm sure my friend Kirsty said that they are together. And you can definitely tell that chemistry comes across really, really nicely on um, on stage. And with us being quite close, we could see all of the facial expressions. You could just tell that these two characters were very, very in love. Um, I also had, uh, we had Danielle on as I can't remember the name of her character, but she was amazing. She was so good. Um, the guy who played Tink, he was also really, really good. Um, I don't think we had any... We didn't have any uh, understudies on. Obviously, as of this point, Andrew has now left Battle of Hell in the UK. He's went to go and do it over in America. Um, so now we have got uh, Jordan Cage uh, playing uh, Strat. And I'm hopefully going to be going... Well, I'm going to London for my birthday. I'll hopefully be going to see that then. Um, and if I do, I'll let you guys know how I thought of Luke, uh, as, of Jordan compared to um, to Andrew. But uh, yeah, I loved that cast. Everything that the cast did was just insane. The, um, all of the ensemble just really looked like they wanted to be there and that is really quite nice. Um, obviously, other shows I've seen are like Kinky Boots, I've seen Wicked, I've seen 42nd Street um, and you could tell that they were enjoying themselves like in Battle of Hell you can tell that the actors in the ensemble are just completely enjoying themselves and that is really nice to see as an audience member especially an audience member who does musical theatre herself who has experienced being you know, on stage, being in the ensemble, I know what it's like, I know it's hard work, it is extremely hard work being an ensemble member, you're kind of in everything, um, and a lot of the time you're playing a lot of different characters, especially in amateur productions, obviously in this they only all played one character, but I thought the ensemble as a whole were incredible, the dance movements were, like, the choreography of that show is insane. I am a dancer myself. Uh, I, you know, I trained when I was little. I don't really dance anymore, but I, I, I have danced in the past, and the choreography was really good. Uh, it was just so well thought out, and 
it went really well with the, the tone of the show and the, the music as well. I'll get on the music in a second as well. Um, but obviously, uh, the way that um, the choreographer sort of pictured these songs is really, really inventive. Uh, I've never seen choreography like it before. Um, she was amazing. I'm sure she, I can't remember her name, but she's like the youngest choreographer in the West End, um, which is insane. And bravo to her. She was in, she, the choreography she came up with was amazing, and the ensemble uh, performed it brilliantly. Um, also, one member of the ensemble is uh, Giovanni, who plays Ledoux. Is it Ledoux? I think so. He was insane. Every time he came on the every time he came on the stage, I was just fixated on him. He was mesmerising to watch and it looked like, especially during um, Out of the Frying Pan, Into the Fire, um, he, you know, he does all these like movements and stuff and it just, it's really, really mesmerising to watch. If you go and see it, um, he is amazing. Another uh, member of the cast I'd like to point out as well is Patrick, who has now left the show, but um, he was amazing in it as well. He is can't remember the name of his character either. They've all got really weird names. Um, that's probably the only problem I have with it. They have got really weird names. Um, but he was incredible as well. Um, everything he did was very... It had a purpose and you could tell it had a purpose and it wanted to portray a story. Um, so yeah, that is everything on the characters. Now, onto the music. Obviously, the, it is based all around the music of Meatloaf. Before I went to go and see Bat Out of Hell, I only knew two songs. I knew Bat Out of Hell and um, I Would Do Anything For Love, but I won't do that. Um, and with only knowing two songs from the show originally, I didn't think I was going to enjoy it that much. But I was completely blown away by the songs, by the music. Um, the performers, you know, voices just portrayed everything that them songs were supposed to portray. Um, especially two out of three ain't bad. I think that song is just, it is so powerful and you know, their voices really portrayed that, that emotion and that power. Um, looking back now, I think my favorite song in the whole thing was a uh, Real Dead Ring of a Love, um, which was re originally sung by Meatloaf and Cher. Um, in the show, I'm gonna get to the cast list up now, get the photo of the cast list I've got. Um, I'll be able to tell you who sang it and that'll be really good it was Zahara and uh, Jaguar which is by uh, they are by Daniel Steers and Chris Cameron respectively and um, they sang that song absolutely beautifully um, it's really upbeat and kind of um it's, very, it's a very fun song compared to a lot of like the more mellow kind of songs during the show. Um, the only thing I did not like about this show is the story. Um, I went with my friends Meg, Kirsty, Robert and Dan and all of them apart from Robert had seen it before so it was me and Robert who were like, it was our first time watching it. Um, and we were told pretty quickly that um, like before we went in were like you might not like it because of the story um, and now I can see why they thought that I really enjoyed it personally and um, I enjoyed the show as a whole but I hated the storyline I thought the storyline was just awful and um, it didn't give you enough time to get attracted to the characters sort of attached to them sorry not attracted to get attached to the characters and um, spoiler alert if you haven't seen it and you want to go and see it click off this video now um because I'm going to spoil it uh, the character of Tink dies um, during the show and I think you're supposed to feel very sad for this character as if um, you know it wasn't supposed to happen to him etc etc and I felt nothing I was just sort of like okay he's died and you know what, what what do you want me to think of it? I didn't feel anything towards any of the characters. Um, I feel like they just came up with a, just with any sort of story and then threw in Meatloaf songs. And I loved the songs, honestly. I loved the music and the choreography. Even, like, the acting was incredible. It's just that storyline is 
really really bad and I watched uh, Rakaya's video on like her review video of Bat Out of Hell and she makes a very good point in that it literally is Peter Pan the story is Peter Pan it's you know this boy who doesn't grow up um because you know the the storyline sort of that um it's set in a post-apocalyptic world you can tell that um and these characters who are called the lost and the lost boys um they have been poisoned or something and they will never grow up they will stay 18 forever um and that is very very similar to peter pan you know peter pan and the lost boys they they don't grow up they don't age um but everyone else around them does aka wendy who is raven in this um tink is also like a real kind of i didn't think of this at the time i was just sort of enjoying the show and being a bit confused by it um but Tink is a reference to Tinkerbell, as Tink in the show does not want Strat to fall in love with uh, Raven. Tink doesn't want Peter. To f Tinkerbell doesn't want Peter to fall in love with Wendy in Peter Pan. You know, it, it it literally does just copy Peter Pan. And knowing that now, I think I'm a little more disappointed with the show than what I was at the time i absolutely adore this show honestly i would go and see it again i'm hoping to go and see it again just the storyline for me was really disappointing um but that is not the reason i'd go and see this show i would literally go and see this show for the acting for the for the songs for the dancing for the atmosphere the atmosphere in the dominion and at that show is just incredible um you know we went to stage door and there's Bat Out of Hell attracts some weird fans, it attracts weirdos, all people who are like Meatloaf fans, but they are very sort of, um, they're weird, they are weirdos, um, but the atmosphere is just incredible, and when, you know, Strat dies during Bat Out of Hell, he, um, you know, the audience just goes mental, like, it is insane, it is a really powerful show to go and see, but, um, if you are going, just be aware that the storyline isn't that good. Um, I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a really good show. Um, it's definitely up there in my top 10 shows. Um, but yeah, I would highly recommend going to see it. I'd give it a solid four stars out of five. Um, the one star let down being the story. Um, but yeah, I think that's my ramble over. That really wasn't a very coherent... Um, What's it called? That wasn't a very good review. That was me just sort of spewing my thoughts at you. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more reviews, please let me know. I've seen 42nd Street, I've seen Wicked and I've seen Kinky Boots as well. Um, like kind of recently I've seen them. I'm definitely going to be doing a Kinky Boots review because that is my all time favourite musical. And yeah, I just think I've got a lot to say on that musical. Um, so if you'd like me to do more reviews, please let me know down below. I could do reviews of films after I've seen films, um, albums, I could literally do anything you want. I kind of want to expand my um, like my content and stuff, so it's not just beauty and theatre, it could be films. I'm a massive film buff, I go to the cinema quite often, I go and see films a lot. Um, so yeah, let me know if you want to see any more reviews, like this video if you did like it and subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye guys!